Good afternoon and welcome back. How's it going, everybody? I'm Miles. Hope you've been doing well. It's been a busy week for me. Um, it's been a weird week in terms of weather. It was really nice today. It was like 70 degrees. So we've officially reached that part of the year where I no longer know how to dress for the entire duration of a day where I will get up in the morning and I'll have to go outside with a sweater and a jacket on and then I'll go back out later on to go and get the mail and I will need a t-shirt and shorts and then I'll go to work in said t-shirt and shorts only to leave work and find that I shouldn't have worn a t-shirt and shorts to work. So, uh, great. Can't wait for allergy season to come up next. Today I'm back with a video talking about a topic that I probably should have talked about a long, long time ago, but I just never got around to it. And I don't really have a good reason as to why, but uh, we're gonna do it today. So let's just go and do it. I kind of wanted to keep up the same sort of theme that I had going on with the previous video talking about the differences between baritone guitars and extended range guitars in regards to this video for today. As a music teacher, there's been so many instances over the years where I've been asked by students and parents of students about what's the better option, what's right for my kid, should I get them an electric guitar to start off, should I get them acoustic, which one's easier to play, questions like that. And to set the record straight right from the get-go, as far as the differences between an acoustic and an electric guitar, as far as playability is concerned, there really is no difference. You're still dealing with six strings that are being suspended across two points, and you pluck the strings in terms of producing sound from the instrument, and you change the pitch of the individual strings by pressing down on different points along the neck of the guitar. And that's the general function of the guitar, whether it is an electric that gets plugged into an amp, or an acoustic that is not plugged into an amplifier. But with all that said, there are some other aspects that go into both the instruments that are worth considering if you're looking to get yourself a new guitar or if you know someone who's looking to get into playing guitar for the first time and you want to make sure they get started on the right foot. So I'm going to try to break things down as simply as possible today as far as the differences, the limitations, the advantages that exist between an acoustic guitar and an electric. So here we go. So let's start off with the obvious. An acoustic guitar doesn't get plugged into an amplifier. Sound is still produced on the acoustic guitar by the vibrating strings, but instead of there being an outboard speaker that the sound is projected out of, instead, the sound hole that's on the body of the guitar is where the sound from the strings is projected out from. This is why an acoustic guitar is usually a favorite option when it comes to performing at a small venue, say, a campfire. Let's gather around the campfire and sing our campfire song. R-C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. It obviously doesn't need to be plugged in. And if you're accompanying a vocalist or you yourself are singing, you can kind of balance out the volume of your voice with the volume of the guitar. And people around you can hear what you're doing without it being overwhelmingly loud or not being loud enough to be heard. But with that said, the acoustic guitar is only going to be but so loud on its own. And so if you are performing for an audience, they have to be in fairly close proximity. And in order to maintain sound clarity, you want to make sure that you're performing in a fairly quiet environment. When it comes to electric guitars, typically what you're dealing with is a solid piece of material, typically wood, that makes up the body. There's nothing hollow inside. It's not like an acoustic guitar where it's a hollow body with another piece of wood on top that contains this open space within it. It's just one big block of wood. Now there's certainly semi-hollow and hollow body electric guitars, but for all intents and purposes for today, we're gonna to be sticking with just solid body guitars. Because of this solid body construction, what that means is that unless an electric guitar is plugged in, it's not going to produce a very loud sound when you hit the strings. And that's just because there's nowhere really for the sound from the strings to travel, like there is with the acoustic guitar where it goes in the sound hole, comes out, projects outward. In this case, more often than not, there's nothing underneath the strings except just the body. And so typically you need it to be plugged in in order for it to be really heard clearly. With this factor in mind, it's not necessarily a bad thing across the board. For example, let's say you live somewhere where you can't be too loud and you can't plug your guitar into an amplifier. In this case, you can still use an electric guitar unplugged. And while it's quieter, you can still play the same way as you would normally without having to alter how you're hitting the strings in the guitar and without disturbing anyone that's around you. And if you don't have room where you live to have an amplifier, you have lots of options as far as headphone amplifiers or some sort of audio interface that you can plug into your computer and use your guitar that way with headphones. 
So this means that, unlike the acoustic guitar, you can use your electric at any time of the day without having to worry about potentially disturbing anyone that's around you. Which, depending on where you live, is a good thing. However, I know some of you out there just have to have some sort of means of amplification if you're going to have an electric guitar. And with that, you're going to find yourself looking at an array of different options that are available to you, varying in price, in wattage, in size, in whether or not there's an attached speaker to the amplifier or if you have to get yourself an external speaker cabinet to go along with it. And that's not all because in addition to that, the guitar itself, all the components that are on it are capable of being swapped out, upgraded to different components, whether it be the bridge, the pickups underneath the strings, uh, the tuning pegs, whatever. And so you can find yourself kind of going down a gear rabbit hole. Not that I know anything about that. As far as the sound associated with the acoustic guitar, it can have a very open, bright, uh, full sound to it that you might not necessarily get with an electric guitar on its own. But in addition to that, there's also a percussive element that exists from strumming of the strings, but also tapping on the body of the guitar as well, or brushing your fingers across the grooves in the wood of the body itself. All of this can offer different timbres of sounds from just one single instrument. There's countless videos online of guys using this sort of technique to its full potential, basically offering what would be more of a full band sort of sound from a single instrument. Strumming the strings, but also tapping a rhythm on the body of the guitar and getting other sounds from the body of the guitar as well to offer a full sound experience. So the acoustic guitar itself is pretty cool. While with the electric guitar you don't have that same range of elements available to you, you do have other parameters that can be adjusted in terms of sculpting your sound, whether it be the volume and tone knobs or the pickup selector switch that indicates which pickup in which position on the body of the guitar is picking up the vibration of the strings, giving you different sounds overall when you're playing. And in addition to that, there's also different amplifiers that can be used as well as infinite, infinite different pedals that are on the market that are available that will sculpt your sound into something completely different than what your guitar would sound like on its own. Now, if you're just starting out with the guitar, something that you want to consider when it comes to getting yourself a guitar to practice on is going to be the size of the instrument that you're playing on. As far as acoustic guitars go, the body of the guitar is going to be bigger by nature. Because it's not being connected to an amplifier, the body itself is going to be serving as a natural amplifier of the string's vibration. So the bigger the body, the louder the instrument's going to be. However, the smaller the player, the harder it's going to be to reach around the body of the guitar to access the strings. But if you're an adult, or you stand when you play the guitar, or you just got really long arms, any guitar, regardless of the body's size, should be fine for you to reach around and access the strings in order to play. As far as electric guitars are concerned, typically the body shape of an electric guitar is going to be more complementary for a player that's sitting down with it or that just is a smaller player because the body itself is going to be thinner compared to an acoustic guitar and therefore it's much easier to get your arms on the front of it to reach the strings. The body doesn't need to be as big because again, the electric guitar is getting plugged into an external speaker potentially. And so that sound that you're looking to get is gonna be coming from an outside sound projection source. The body of the electric guitar can be slimmer because again, it's gonna be potentially plugged into an outside audio source, an amplifier, audio interface, whatever. And so it doesn't need to have the same dimensions as an acoustic guitar that the body on an acoustic is serving as the amplifier in that case. And in the case of acoustic guitars, there's slimmer bodied models that are available on the market as well, so that it's much easier to reach around and actually play the instrument. When it comes to functionality in regards to the acoustic guitar, there's no volume or tone knobs to worry about having to adjust. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because what this does is that it allows you to always know what your guitar is gonna sound like. 
there's going to be no variables that are going to change from each time that you sit down to play your guitar because every time you sit down with your acoustic, it's going to be the same guitar. And from an educational standpoint, when it comes to just learning the guitar for the first time, sitting down with an acoustic where you don't have to worry about flipping any switches, turning any knobs, plugging anything in, it's going to allow you to maintain focus on the main objective at hand, which is learning how to play the guitar. There's no individual adjustments when it comes to the strings on an acoustic guitar. It's just one bridge piece and the strings sit over the top of that and that's it. However, if you're a player that's going from playing strictly electric to wanting to switch over to acoustic, you may find a noticeable difference as far as the height of the strings in relation to the fretboard. Because unlike the electric guitar, you can't adjust how high the strings are in relation to the fretboard. Opposite of that though, if you're transitioning from playing an acoustic guitar and switching over to playing electric, you're going to find that it's going to be quite easy to play bar chords, bend strings, implement vibrato into your playing when it comes to utilizing it on the electric guitar compared to an acoustic guitar. It's for this reason that some musicians, when they're practicing between performances, will practice a lot of their songs that are normally played on an electric guitar. They'll practice them on an acoustic, almost like sort of adding some additional resistance to what they're doing already when they're playing, just so that when they switch back over to playing on an electric guitar, they're that much more efficient when they're playing through whatever they're playing. Though when it comes to new students, regardless of whether they're playing electric or acoustic, the first thing I'll typically recommend to them is to have a set of light strings put on their guitar, just so that when they're fretting notes, they're not finding a bunch of resistance pressing the string down to the frets, and to also use a lighter pick so that when they're getting used to strumming, there's less resistance of the pick as it goes across the strings, and so they're less likely for the pick to go flying out from between their fingers to never be seen again. It just makes the experience overall much easier to get acclimated to. Intonation in its simplest terms just means that you're maintaining the same pitches across the entire span of the neck of the guitar. So what that means is that you could play a note down at the third fret on the E string, and that'll be the same note if you play it at the 15th fret on that same string. It's not gonna be sharp or flat. So when it comes to playing single notes or chords, whether you're playing them low or up high, you're gonna wanna have a guitar that has proper intonation so that nothing sounds strange, regardless of where you're playing it on the neck of the guitar. With that said, when it comes to the electric guitar, most models will come with saddles on the bridge that individually can be adjusted so that you can accurately set the intonation for each string. There's some guitars that are out on the market that have a sculpted bridge piece that is set in the way that allows for the guitar to have perfect intonation so long as you stay in the tuning that it's designated to stay in. There's also some guitars that are out there that have saddles that are shared between multiple strings, but for the most part, what you'll find available are electrics that have individual saddles for each string so that you can adjust the intonation of each string accordingly. With acoustics, you don't have the same flexibility as the bridge piece itself is going to be one piece that the strings all sit across. However, majority of the acoustic guitars that are available out on the market nowadays, the bridge piece is sculpted in a way so that you have more accurate intonation across all six of the strings. But there are some factors that can play a role in how well that intonation from the bridge piece actually functions, which leads us into our next section, tuning. There's a number of different reasons why as a guitar player you might want to change the tuning of your guitar. It might be for a specific song that you're trying to learn, it could be for better accompanying a vocalist and their vocal range, or perhaps you're trying to make it easier to fret notes along the neck of the guitar without having to switch over to playing super light strings. In which case you would alter the tuning of your instrument so that it's better suitable to your needs. Now aside from rare instances, more often than not, when it comes to changing the tuning of your guitar, the direction you want to go in is down down don't go up there's few instances where you need to tune up and you don't want to tune up too high because what can happen is that you can damage the slots on top of the neck of the guitar where the strings sit and it's an expensive fix so be be careful if you do want to go up in pitch you have options like utilizing a capo which will shorten the length of the neck of your guitar whether it be acoustic or electric a capo will also allow you to maintain the same sort of playing that you would do in normal standard tuning. So your chord shapes are the same, all the notes exist in the same manner. But when tuning down on both guitars, you want to take the relationship between the strings and the guitar itself into account. On any guitar that you pick up and start to play, the function of it is going to be the same. 
the strings vibrate because they're being suspended across two points and those two points are putting tension on the string which allows it to vibrate at a given pitch. So picture, if you will, the strings on the guitar as being a tightrope at the circus and your fingers are the trapeze artists that are gonna walk across this tightrope. If the strings are nice and tight, it's gonna be real easy to pluck those strings and have a nice long sustained note come from those strings. Just like it would be very easy for a trapeze artist to walk across the top of a tightrope. And so when you're tuning the strings on your guitar lower, what you're doing is lessening the amount of tension that's being put on the strings, which is going to allow for some cool things like more expressive vibrato, ease of fretting the notes, but it can also lead to some instability when it comes to actually playing notes and sustaining notes on the guitar. Just like in reference to our tightrope walker, it's gonna be much harder for them to sustain their balance on a more slack tightrope or loose rope, I guess. You can see this sort of concept in action by just simply taking a rubber band and stretching it out and plucking the middle of that stretched rubber band. It'll vibrate, possibly to a pitch, much more than it would if that rubber band was just sitting on its own on the table. And so with both acoustic and electric guitars, one way that you can combat this lack of tension that might exist on your guitar when you're tuning down is by implementing the use of heavier strings. By using thicker strings, you're allowing yourself the ability to reach tension where you can make the strings vibrate, but at a lower pitch. But this only really works to a degree because the thicker you go, the less vibration you can actually get from the strings because there's just so much mass there. And if it's not stretched across a longer scale length, it's not gonna matter how thick the string is. It's not gonna vibrate as much as normal fitting strings would. And this is also gonna affect your intonation overall as well. This too can also damage the points of contact that exist on the guitar. So just tread lightly, take your time. Um, if you're gonna put heavier strings on your guitar, go take it to a shop, have them file out the slots on the nut just so that you don't have to worry about breaking that. One of the advantages that the electric has over the acoustic in this instance is that if you are tuning lower, again, you can take the saddles and you can move them back further so that you can maintain stability as far as tension of the string, but also better uh, intonation overall. And while putting heavier strings in your guitar is gonna be a decent option to an extent, it's only to an extent. Eventually, you're gonna to have to consider doing something different if you wanna tune lower, in which case you might wanna consider investing in a baritone guitar. And if you wanna learn more about baritone guitars, I suggest you check out my previous video that I did on the topic. Going further in on the topic of guitar strings, when it comes to the acoustic, you'll find that majority of the packs that are available are gonna have strings that are more along the thicker side. And that's just simply because with the acoustic guitar, it's serving as its own means of amplification of its sound. The strings are thicker so that you can hit them harder so that the sound is projected further. This also means that when you hit the strings harder, they're gonna maintain their clarity and sustain and not sound like banjo strings. However, if you're just starting out on the guitar, you may find pressing down on the strings of an acoustic guitar to be a difficult task to undertake. And so another option, in addition to considering getting some lighter gauge strings, is also to consider investing in a nylon string guitar. The strings in this case, because they're not metal, are of a softer material and they're gonna be easier to press down and you're still gonna be able to hear what you're doing and perform for other people and still be heard. And again, sets of thinner strings are available, but if you find that you're a heavy strummer when it comes to playing the acoustic guitar, that thin strings are not gonna maintain the same sort of stability that you would get from heavier gauge strings. You're not gonna have the same amount of clarity and sustain from the chords that you're playing, and you're gonna find that notes tend to buzz out if you hit them hard enough. This is also a fact that it plays a part in why the strings are higher off the fretboard in comparison to the electric guitar because they're thicker, so you don't want them slapping against the frets as much as they would if they were closer to the frets. With the electric guitar, you're gonna have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to strings because you can adjust all those parameters like the height and distance of the saddles regardless of whether you're using thick or thin strings. But the same drawback from super thin strings applies here as well, where while you have the advantage of thinner strings being easier to bend and apply vibrato to, they're not gonna have the same amount of sustain as thicker strings would. Thinner strings also have the tendency to sound a little bit thinner compared to thicker ones. This leads us into our next topic, recording and amplification. Eventually, you'll probably get to a point where you're going to want to record your playing on the guitar, whether it be acoustic or electric. Maybe you want to be one of those trendy Instagram guitar players that gets like all up in the camera and they're all up in the groove in whatever they're playing to let you know that they're really feeling the music. Or maybe you're trying to put together a recording of your own original music. 
in which case the process of recording electric guitar compared to acoustic guitar is going to be slightly different. As far as the electric guitar, it's kind of what it's built to do, get plugged into some sort of means of amplifying the sound of the guitar, whether it be a outboard speaker or an audio interface where you're going to record your audio. It's meant for that purpose and the process is pretty simple from there. And when you're recording using an amplifier, the process would be to place a microphone in front of the amp speaker and you would take that microphone, whatever it's plugged into, to actually record the audio that's coming from the speaker. the same case when it comes to utilizing an audio interface to record your guitar it's just that the process is much more simplified because you don't have to worry about putting a microphone in front of a physical amplifier speaker however in most cases when it comes to the acoustic guitar the process isn't quite as simple while on the surface the function of the acoustic and the electric guitar are the same the process of capturing audio of an acoustic guitar or amplifying audio of an acoustic guitar is going to differ to some degree certainly you can have an acoustic electric guitar that has the ability to have a cable plugged into it and you can direct that cable to an amplifier or an audio interface. However, the sound that gets captured or presented through a speaker cabinet is not necessarily going to sound the same as your guitar would if you were playing it unplugged. A lot of that comes down to how the audio from the acoustic guitar is being processed. So if you're plugging your acoustic into the front of an amplifier that's got a 412 speaker and a distortion channel, or you're plugging it into an audio interface with no other sort of audio assistance being put in front of your direct signal, you might not be happy with the results that you get. Without some preliminary sculpting to your guitar's audio signal, you might not be happy with the sound from it coming through an amplifier or going into your audio interface. It's going to have a bit of a darker sound quality. You may have some peaks in the audio from you striking the strings too hard and overloading the signal itself. So a way to get around this would be to either invest in an amplifier specifically made for an acoustic guitar or to record your guitar or amplify your guitar with a microphone set up in front of it.
Something that's worth noting about this approach, however, is that by using a stationary microphone, that means that your source of capturing audio is stationary. That means that the guitar, in order to get the best audio from it, needs to remain stationary as well. So if you're shifting around in your chair, that means that you're gonna be susceptible to changes in volume as far as the actual sound projection coming from your acoustic guitar. This also means that if you're one of the players that leans on their guitar and is like real close in proximity to the microphone, you have the potential to pick up other sound sources on the microphone, like your breathing. Or if you're shifting around in a chair, squeaking. With this method of capturing audio from your acoustic, you also want to make sure that you're trying to record in a quiet environment. You don't want to be somewhere where there's a lot of outside noise that's going to get picked up by the microphone itself. And you also want to keep in mind that depending on where you place the microphone in proximity to the guitar will determine what kind of sound you get. If you place the microphone closer to the sound hole on the guitar, you'll get a louder sound, but you also have the potential to pick up other sound sources as well, like the pick hitting the strings in your guitar. It's why in instances like these, you'll find that studio engineers will use multiple microphones in different positions to record an acoustic guitar. It just allows for you to get the fuller audio picture of the guitar. So having a microphone that's closer to the fretboard and a microphone that's closer to the bottom side of the guitar will give you a fuller sound presentation of what the guitar actually sounds like. As far as the final verdict on all this, there's really no right or wrong way to get yourself started when it comes to playing the guitar. Whether you go with an acoustic or an electric, you're gonna find that there's advantages as well as limitations to both instruments. The main thing I encourage you to keep in mind when it comes to the guitar, if you're looking to seriously pursue learning how to play it, is to make your investment into an instrument one that's a good quality instrument. I've had countless students over the years that have come in to get started on lessons that have come in with instruments that are essentially toys and are really not functional in terms of learning how to actually play the guitar. The strings are a mile high off the fretboard. It won't stay in tune. It's too short of a scale, so the strings don't sustain notes. And it's just not enjoyable to try and play. And while that might seem like a decent option for a young child so that the parent's not throwing down a bunch of money on an instrument that they don't know that their kid's going to stick with, after a while, if they're showing interest in wanting to continue pursuing the instrument further, you're going to want to invest in a proper instrument just so that they're not developing bad habits. And price-wise, there's countless options that are available on the market that are also decent as far as their quality. You'll find with companies like Squire and Epiphone, which are sub-companies of Fender and Gibson, they're less expensive options, but still good quality instruments. And companies like Donner and Yamaha have shown themselves to also have offerings that are of decent quality and reasonable pricing. So. You have lots of options available. And in addition to getting yourself an instrument that's of decent quality to get started with, you also wanna treat that instrument like it's of good quality so that it stays of good quality. And so when you get your hands on your instrument, take it to your local music store, have them do a setup on it, have them put a new set of strings on it. Get a case, get a case. Don't be that student that's walking through the door for their lesson with a guitar that's not in a case and they're bumping it into the metal door on their way in, just putting dings in it, and chipping the paint and all this stuff, knocking it out of tune. Just don't, don't do that. <laughs> a guitar is made of porous materials and materials that are susceptible to temperature changes. So don't leave it in the car on a winter day. Don't leave it in the car on a summer day. Basically treat your instrument like it's a child. Would you leave a child in a hot car on a summer day? The answer's no. The answer's always no. All right, don't think about it. The answer's no. So treat your guitar the same way. <laughs> Overall, treat the purchase of your instrument as an investment into your future in terms of your guitar playing. Don't treat it like you're just throwing money out the window. To put things into a different perspective, when I was growing up, my family didn't have a lot of money. And so investing into something that I potentially wasn't going to stick with was not an option. I ended up getting my first guitar as a gift. And that guitar that I got when I was six, that acoustic washburn, I still use to this day. And as far as my first electric, it took me a while to get that because my parents were steadfast in telling me no when it came to getting one, just because we lived in a tiny apartment and we had neighbors that like, if you had the TV too loud, would bang on the wall telling you to turn it down. In fact, I think I had to get my bike stolen like five times before I finally got my parents to agree to get me an electric guitar. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> but beyond there, any other guitars that I got or any other components that I uh, came into possession of, they were purchased with money that I was spending out of my own pocket. And so 
with that investment into myself, I gained a better respect for the things that I had. So treat your guitar, whether it be electric or acoustic, treat it with respect and it'll last you a good long time. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got for you for today. I hope you found this video to be interesting and informative. If you like what I'm doing here and you haven't already, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Stick around. I got more stuff to show further down the road. And if you like what I'm doing here and you'd like to support the channel further, I'll leave a link to my Patreon page down below in the description. But otherwise, that's all I got for you guys for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, keep playing. Peace.